Hi, it's Jim with So Scraptastic. Um, today, like I said, we are going to sew the bag. Here's the finished bag that my husband wanted for his little keyboard to slide into. And it does fit. I'm going to show you the down and dirty, rough and dirty way that I do it. Um, I still do need to iron it to press it, but other than that, it is finished. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed that little bit of the video. Um, it's not meant to teach you how to make bags. Uh, it's just teaching you how I figure out how, what size I'm going to use, that kind of thing. And um, there are plenty of methods to determining what size bag you want to make. You know, you have to take into consideration are you putting a handle on? Are you using a zipper, Velcro? Uh, or is it just going to be a drawstring? Do you need to add something for the drawstring or not? Those kind of things. But uh, here's the video. I hope you enjoy it. I hope it's in, in good in, in shot. I tried to get it in shot. We'll see. If it's not, I'll be making a new one. Bye. Hi, it's Jane. But uh, here's the video. I hope you enjoy it. I hope it's in, in good in, in shot. I tried to get it in shot. We'll see. If it's not, I'll be making a new one. Bye. Hi, it's Jane with So Scraptastic. And today we are going to determine what we need to make this a pouch or a bag or something for this keyboard. It is a universal black lip Bluetooth keyboard by Arctech and I am going to make a small carrying case for my husband. Now what you are going to need is a piece of paper and either a ruler or you, I'm going to use the grid on my map for this portion. So, uh, and I know there are still shadows here, but uh, we'll work through that just fine. You'll see. And I need a pen or a pencil. Let me find something. All right, what we need to do first is to measure how long this is, and according to this, it is just past 10 inches. I'm going to give it 10 and a quarter, and then for width, we have 6 and a quarter. Now, I've measured my item, and my item is 10 and a fourth inches high by 6 and a fourth inches wide. Now, I do want to box the bottom by 1 inch, so half of that would be 1 half an inch. I'm going to add half an inch to this and half an inch to this and I get six and three-fourths and then I get here ten and three-fourths. I am going to do half an inch seam allowance. Now this is just my way of adding it in so this would be eleven and a fourth and then this one would be seven and a fourth. But I honestly, I also need to add an inch to the top of the height here on both sides so that I have room for my Velcro. So that's two inches. This would still be seven and a fourth. 
So I believe I'm going to round everything up. There will also be a seam allowance of a fourth of an inch up here to the top since we are just making a long sleeve envelope with a fold down in here. So that would bring this down to 13 and a half. by seven and a fourth but I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut it very generous 14 inches by seven and a half and that should get us a large enough item to uh, create that nice envelope with the sleeve plenty of room for him to get his hand in and Sometimes this is trial and error. Like I said, lots of times if you are doing a boxed item, if you're making a bag, say you want it to be 10 inches finished by 8 inches wide, 10 tall. The way that that works is if you want a box bottom of 4 inches, you would cut that in half and add two to this side but you would add four to this side because you're going to cut away from it so then your cut piece would be 12 by 12 then your cut corners would be 2 by 2 two tall two in to the wide and then from that from this measurement here you need to add in your seam allowance and generally I do a fourth of an inch on the top and I also do anywhere from a fourth of an inch to half an inch on the bottoms so generally I would probably most likely cut this twelve and a half by probably thirteen I may cut it down to 12 and a half, 12 and a half by 12 and a half to get my finished item. It just depends on the mood and the fabric. Sometimes directional fabric changes the way you have to do that math. I know this doesn't make sense. That's a, that's a quick down and dirty on figuring out a finished bag size by adding in how much you need to cut off of each one. I mean, add to each one to get your four inch depth on this bag. And the only reason you only take two from this side is simply because you're only going, you're going to take away two from each side of the piece fabric you cut. You have to cut two. This one, you would add four because you're taking more off the sides than you are. Um, the length. Uh, I hope that makes sense. You've got to add two inches on one side, two inches on the other. All right, that's it. I hope some of this makes sense. It may not to you, but it does to me. Let's get to cutting. And does that mean it's going to actually be that length? Not necessarily. Um, sometimes you get close and sometimes you're so far off when you're sewing your seams because you thought you added half an inch and then you decide to sew a quarter of an inch and just blew it all out of the water. Alright, that's it for this portion. I'll see you guys again soon. Well, I will tell you, 
I remembered I had this piece that I had made a mistake on when I had cut it for the zipper. So I am going to simply use it and use the width. It's already got that lovely fleece in there. So I'm going to cheat. I'm going to use it. I'll place my ruler on the 14 inch mark. Got it down here. That's the size I need to cut this way. And I'm just going to change up the way that I was going to do things. I am going to, I have another piece here as well in a lining fabric and I'm going to use that. And uh, then we will sew it up and we'll be done. Now I've got my pieces. There are two inner and two outer. And I just do that because I like the way it works up to begin with. Now I know I need to put my Velcro in. And I know I'm going to have half an inch, so I am going to measure down about an inch from that. From the top. And this piece is about in the nine, nine, not quite nine inches. But I figure I'm going to put it about there, seven and two. So I am going to mark this on this side here so that I know that that is where my placement will be for my Velcro. And I'm going to repeat that on this other side. And then I am going to sew my Velcro in first. And we will move over there to the machine. Alright, I have my Velcro and I'm actually going to sew it in place. I'm going to place it along that line. And I am just going to sew all the way around. That happens. Going to do the same thing with the soft side.
I'm going to do something a little different here. I'm going to one pin these and I am going to pin right sides together. I'm going to pin right sides together and sew my top seam. Sew my top seam. And I'm going to do the same with the other piece. Now I am going to place these, get rid of the Velcro, right sides together and we will match the seams. And generally I just clip those in place. You could actually pin them in place. And then we are going to sew all around the sides, but we are going to leave an opening. We are going to leave an opening down here at the bottom so we can turn our bag. And you want to make sure that when you start to sew, that you do a back stitch.
Now here is where I will box my corners. And I believe I'm going to do three-fourths of an inch. And generally all I do is I hold it together like this. Turn it down a little bit. And then I just cut. And then I will box those corners. fabric's going to stick together. You want to make sure that your seams meet up in the center. I generally go in about half an inch on these. Do the other side and get it apart. Now a lot of people do like a quarter inch from the seam in for their boxing. I don't. I just take it from the very bottom there and use it. It all works out the same. And I do go over a couple times just because I'm going to do the same here. And like I said, generally I'll just hold the two pieces together and do my trimming that way. And the fusible fleece adds a little more threadage, fun stuff to have to fight with. And then we'll box the bottoms again. There are many ways to box your bottoms. This is just one of the ways that I do. It works. It's quick. It's fast. When you're sewing multiple bags, you want things to go as fast as possible.
like I said, the main thing is to get your seam edges to line up. Now the interior of the bag, you don't really need to reinforce, but I always reinforce the outside bag. It just works better. Now this is where we reach our hand in that little hole we put in there. And now we have to undo our Velcro because, you know, it's stuck together. And you want to pull your bag out. Your opening. And this, my friends, is called birthing a bag. You want to poke out your corners. You need to reach in here and make sure you get your bag's corners poked out because if you don't do it now, you can do it later. It just gets too difficult. And then I will sew the bottom closed. You can hand stitch if you choose to. I don't normally hand stitch. Um, you could use some Wonder Under if you can cut it thin enough. And you just want to close your opening. That way things won't get in and out and in the middle. You want to snip all your threads. Make sure you did get it sewn shut. Sometimes you miss a little edge there. And then you basically push this bag down into the other. And I generally make sure that my corners went into their corner spots. And then you can take this to the iron if you want, or you can roll it around. And you can do a top stitching on the very top. And I'll do that a little bit later, but now we're going to see if it's actually going to fit. And it does, and he has room to spare. So I will do the top stitching later, and, uh, you know, because I've got to move all this fun stuff. I'll go ahead and do that now. Take off my table portion here. This is kind of fiddly because it is a small bag. And 
then sometimes you gotta roll it back and forth to get it to roll right. You click your stitches and we're all done. And there is his bag. What I would do normally is I would iron it, press it out, and it's ready to go. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. And we will see you again soon. So thank you guys. I really appreciate you watching the video. Um, see if I can get this camera right. I appreciate you watching the video and uh, yeah cameras being a little stubborn what can we say there we go now I always wear my mighty eyes because it keeps me my eyes from getting tired and it protects it in case the needle breaks you always want to wear eyewear when you're sewing so that you don't have a needle fly into your eye because that's no fun having to have that removed all right guys that is it for today's video i hope you enjoyed it and we will see you again soon so there that's it now if i can find the stop button <laughs>